Pregame.com. NCAA bracket picking tips. Years of research. We're going to break them down for you. And Marco's here just to nod and say, wow. You know? <laughs> Don't feel a need to do anything more than that. Here's what we're going to do, though. We're going to read down the list. And these are available at pregame.com on the homepage. You can click the link. But what I wanted to do the video for is I wanted to kind of give a holistic. It's funny because you can say early bet more underdogs, late or, or pick more underdogs, late more favorites. But there's actually a symmetry to this if we think it through. So I'm going to read each of the tips down and stop at each round and, and I can explain where I see the symmetry. First off. Number 16's 0 for 108. That's easy. Number 15's 4 for 108. Pretty easy. You've got to feel pretty strongly to pick a 15. Here's the first tip, though. So pick zero number ones and number twos to lose, I think, is a good tip. But let's talk about this. The bigger your bracket contest, the more random or the more underdogs and upsets you need to pick. So let's just say you and I were picking... Uh, against each other for a, a freeze out amount of money, you know, a thousand bucks or whatever, is I would get super conservative. In fact, I would probably win if I just picked all the better seeds. Because mm -hmm. right? assuming you would pick underdogs, and, and, and most likely I'm going to win more. But if I picked, if I was going against 20 people, picking all the better seeds would never win or right. very unlikely to win. And then if I'm picking against 20,000 or 2 million, so if you're going into the ESPN pools, you want to get crazy and maybe pick 115 to win. But if you're going in a smaller office pool, you can do a lot less. So that's a general concept. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it, it's, it's game theory. You're talking game theory. Game theory. There you go. You didn't even graduate high school. How do you know about game theory? <laughs> Did you get your GED? No. We or they, got, call it, they called it an equivalency back no, then, didn't they? No, we, we, we got a diploma, <laughs> sir. <laughs> So, uh, I, I, listen, back then, I mean, even if you didn't, where you grew up, it was like, what, a 40% dropout rate, right? Just a note, <laughs> my graduating class, high school, was 600. Yours, yeah, but, yours yeah, was? But, but 1100, 1100 started in kindergarten. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Number two. His was uh, double digits. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Number two is that with the 13 and 14 seeds, you want to pick at least one of them to win, okay? They actually win 18% of the time, the 13s and 14s. And in fact, there's been at least one top four seed that's lost in the first round, 23 of 27 years. So if you've got the one, two, three, and four in each bracket, even winning the first game, you're going against a lot of history there. Only four in 27 years has that happened. So more upsets with 13 and 14. But again, the, more, the bigger your pool is, the more upsets in general you want. Now, to jump in there, one of the things that stand out to me why that there would be some upsets in that round for you is I think, and more so in the last few years, but I mean, obviously your numbers are, are there long term. My, the numbers are from 1985, which is when the modern era of 64 teams started. Now, with the playing games, we're gonna see as the years pass if it changes anything, go ahead. But the mid-majors that are starting to get more attention and what's happened, the change of the landscape with college basketball is the premier conferences, premier teams, they're getting their players for one and two years, and then they're moving on. The mid these mid-major teams, these are the, just the notch below athletes, but they're staying longer. And they're, so you've got more senior-laden teams. They're lower seeds. They're lesser athletes, but they're more cohesive team chemistry. Cohesive, and have, I like and have that. have experience, and I think, and that's why you see more of these upsets. And you're also starting to see now the selection committee is giving more respect to some of these mid-majors in their seedings. Last tip for the first round is don't be shy picking the 12s, 11, 10s, and 9s to have upsets. We all know about the 12s, but here's a stat. 21 of 23 years, at least one 12 has had an upset. And here's what's interesting. The number 9 seeds have won 6 more games or 6 games above 500 against the 8 seeds. 
So you're going to have a certain group in the pool that's going to pick the eights more just because the eight is higher than nine. And if anything, historically, and again, we're talking about 108 games, so it's not statistically significant, but they're at least winning half the time, in this case, even a little bit more. And if you look at the lines in those eight nines, so many times, and I didn't look at this year's to see if it is this year again, but the nines in a lot of the games are actually favored over the eights because Vegas and the selection committee disagree. And that brings up a good point, which is one of the, if I could just give one tip, for brackets is that in most pools that are fairly big a majority of the people won't even know what the lines are mm -hmm. okay so use your lines as a guy this is vegas telling you really what they think this game is you know again it's the whole is it a true line or a fair line and splitting the results but in a very general in, but also in a powerful way they're saying this team should win more than 50% of the time. And if you know, like, for example, there might be a 12 against 5, but the 12 is only a three-point underdog, lines are going to tell you a lot of where to pick the upsets. Absolutely. Okay, so let's, let's recap the first round. In general, respect the ones and twos. Otherwise, feel free to have more upsets than maybe your gut instinct. Understanding the reoccurring theme is going to be the bigger the pool, the more upsets you're going to want because it's going to take a more extreme result to actually win the pool. All right, round two. Advance all number one seeds into the third round unless there's a very good reason not to. So it's not only the first game they win, they win the second game. 88% of the time they make the Sweet 16. Number two, keep advancing any number 12s or number 10 seeds that you pick to win in the first round. They've actually advanced almost 50% of the time. So if a 10 or a 12, now to some degree this is, this is you know, backfitting, because why wouldn't 11 advance? But, but, but it does speak specifically to the 10s and 12s. They actually win, I think it's only one game below 500, they actually win that second game. All right. Now, here, here's what's interesting about the 12s. The number 12 seeds have more Sweet 16 appearances than number 7 seeds. That's pretty powerful. <laughs> so it's back again, and, and, and that's the thing about the 12. It's the la usually the last at-large bid. So these mm. are the teams that are not automatic bids, so they in a way they played themselves into the mm. tournament. Right, and if they take out, when they take out the number 5, they're taking out the favorite of that bracket to get down, you know, as they're advancing. So, you know, you have took out your, the gun that you had to, to beat. So it's a good possibility for them to move on. Makes sense. Okay. D to wrap up the idea of kind of advancing these double-digit seeds, a double-digit seed has made the Sweet 16 25 of 27 years. So if you're so chalk, you don't have a double digit in there, you're making a mistake. So it's a reoccurring theme is these 12s and 11s and 10s do well even in the second round. Okay, pick at least one upset of a number two or number three seed. Okay, only once in the last 27 years has all of the top three seeds, one, two, and three, made the sweet 16 in each of the four. Mm -hmm. So 26 of 27 years, there's been an upset. Now, we've already said though, the ones make it through 88% of the time, so it's gotta be a two or a three that you wanna pick to, have to lose in the second round because they rarely make it to, as we talked about, all of them out to the Sweet 16. Lastly, now here's where the paradox begins. You, each round kind of has a ceiling that you don't want to go above. So we kind of said the, fir the, second, the first round, you don't want to go above a 15. 15s and 16s, forget about Draw a line, right, for the most part. Is do not pick any seed worse than a 12 to get to the second round. So the 13s and 14s that you pick to win in round one, forget them. Only six of 432 teams that's made the Sweet 16 were seeded worse than a 12 seed. So 1.4% are 13s and above. Everyone else is 12s and below. So unless you're in a super big pool, you draw that line at the 12 and say nothing above that into the Sweet 16. And again, to go into theory behind that, 
if you have a team that does pull off one of those high seeds that pull off a win like that, it's such a big win from a handicapping standpoint. Me as a situational guy, I'm actually looking to go against that team because they had their big game, they're, they're ripe for a letdown. Even though this is the big dance and they're moving to the championship, these teams know their, their chances of winning the national championship are slim. That was such a huge win that sometimes that one win is satisfying enough. It's a good point. I thought you were just going to nod, but you're uh, actually yeah, I got, I got ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're into the Sweet 16. We got two tips in this round. Advance exactly three number one seeds to the Elite Eight. So 72% of number one seeds make the Elite Eight. So to win three games, about three out of four number ones win three games. All right, so as much as we're saying don't be too chalky, the number ones is a place to be chalky to the Elite Eight. eight. Next round we'll be talking about something a little bit different. And number two, we've got another place to draw that line. Advance no team worse than a number 11 into the Elite Eight. So we eliminated 13 and above last round. Mm -hmm. Now 12s are gone. 25 seeds worse than 11 have made the Elite or the, the Sweet 16. Only one has advanced. Now think about that stat. Seeds worse than 11 in the Sweet 16 round are one winner and 24 losers. Wow. That's worth the price. How much is this video? Wait a minute. Yeah. This is free. <laughs> That's a great stat. All right, so we're back to the idea is the super chalk is hard to beat, and each round has a ceiling you don't want to go above. All right, moving on to the lead eight round of picking. Here's where the ceiling, or here's where the chalk changes. In 21 of 27 years, there's been exactly one or two number one seeds in the final four. Okay, so we have three of them advanced here, we at least have one lose, but oftentimes two are going to lose in the Elite Eight round. And last year was the first time ever there were zero number ones, and so there's five times there's been three or four number one seeds mm -hmm. in 27 years. If you, I bet if you look at ESPN.com, there's going to be three, at least three number ones in half the brackets right. into the final four. History says no, and I don't buck history. <laughs> Any thoughts on that? Uh, it makes sense. I mean, it, it's come down to it every year. You've, you've got these upsets, teams that are, you know, all the pressure of the number one seed and, you know, trying to... Plus, visit. is once you get to this round, you're not playing the 13s and the 14s. You're playing good teams. And, and in a way, this is a great opportunity as a, as a batter to think if you've got three number ones in here and you're getting six, seven points, five, six, seven points in each one, you, you might just do well playing all the dogs. All right, last tip. He, the ceiling gets really low, though. Advance no team worse than a number eight to the final four. So we were at 11. We're taking 11s, 10s, and 9s out. Mm -hmm. No worse than eight. Of the 108 final four teams, three have been worse than an eight. Now, one happened to be last year. Yeah. And people have a recency bias, as they call it. But I don't per so in a way, there's only 32 teams you should really be considering for the Final Four. All right, going down the home stretch. In the Final Four, advance no team worse than a number six seed to the championship game. Only one team worse than a number six has made the championship game in 26 years. Happened to be last year again. <laughs> They're messing with my stats. They are. But, but it's still one in 26 years is better or worse than a six. Last year it was Butler at eight. And second tip in the final four, do not advance two number one seeds to the championship game. Since 1979, going even further back than the modern era, only six times has there been one against one. And every other time, it's been something else. Any, any thoughts? The only problem is you got to pick which ones those ones are. <laughs> but, but true, and that makes it fun, but it yeah. does help guide the conversation and, or guide your decision-making might be the better way to say it. And last one is championship round, and this might be the best stat of all. Pick a four-seater batter to win it. 23 straight years, it's been a four-seater batter. So it's a 16-team tournament, really, when it comes to that champion. 
Now, do you happen to have that in that number? I don't know if you have it. How many times was the matchup a one and you know one to four for the championship game? One to four? Because you say you know don't take anybody higher than a four to win it. To win it, but just you know. Is it always, do those two match up a lot of the times in the championship Ones game? and fours? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Four isn't special. Four is because Arizona was a four when they won, <laughs> when they won in 96 or whatever. It sh but, but, and again, last year Connecticut was a four. So it, for whatever reason, it, it, each of these levels, again, seems to be that there's a ceiling. If you're not better than this, you can't win three straight games or four straight games or five straight games. And in this case, you can't win six straight games unless you're a four, or at least you've got 23 years of saying it's not happening. All right. A couple things that are fun, just to wrap up, is the perfect bracket stuff, yeah. okay? And actually, we should probably do a quick separate video on that. So I'm going to do that. Any closing thoughts? No, I, you know, these are great guidelines for people. And, and again, you go back to game theory, it, it, it does, because this is a game if you're in the bigger the And you've pool. got 27 years. Yeah. You know, and I can be, you know, honest when it comes to, like, brackets, me is a handicapper. My whole life is point spreads. When you do anything that you're just picking a winner, it's a, I suck at it. I'll be the first to admit it. All my friends, you know, text me, fill out my breakfast. I literally suck at this because my whole mind is geared to point spreads. I, I can't wrap myself around just picking a winner. Well, you know, luckily we have this video. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to do another video on the perfect brackets, which are fun. But here's the thing is we've got a ton of content for March Madness. You can get this all written out at pregame.com, and you can see all the videos, and there's going to be a lot of them at pregame.tv. Talk to you there.